Hi, welcome to Women in Power. Thank you so much for joining me. Today, I have Alexa Carlin that I'm really excited to interview today. Um, she also has a huge event that she puts on every year. This will be the third year. It's called the Women in Power Expo. This year, it'll be in Fort Lauderdale. 3,000 plus entrepreneurial women. Is it just limited to women? No, men are welcome also. Men are welcome also, okay. <laughs> yes. Um, if I was a man, that's the event right. I would go to. I know. Come on. <laughs> yes. And and I'm I'm really excited because this year I'll be speaking there. You invited me to speak, and I, I can't wait to meet all the, the women and men who dare to show up. Um, so I'm really glad that you're on the show today because... Because I know what it takes to put on an event like that. It takes a very special person that can really move through the nose, make massive action happen, and continue to, to, to pull an event of that magnitude together. And, and I really applaud you for that. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah, I always like talking to people who get it. <laughs> Yeah, it's not you just show up and everything yeah. just is, I mean, I, I understand everything that goes on with all the details and, and you're yeah. so young to be so together. I did want to talk you. about that because at 17 years old, you were a CEO of what? Of what? Uh, I started my first company designing jewelry for an LA based fashion company mm. called Omni Peace. Mm -hmm. And I became the sole licensee to design jewelry for this brand that was sported by Jennifer Aniston, Courtney Cox. And it was just this random idea I had that I emailed. This was before social media. So I had to like find all the emails and just take action on this idea. And then I sold them on it and I started. Who did you, who did you write? So I wrote. How do you get through the gatekeeper yes, to get, good yes. Yes, question. I researched the company, emailed any like contact form or email mm -hmm. I could find. I always put like, the person's name mm -hmm. at their company.com. Mm -hmm. Sometimes mm -hmm. it works, sometimes it doesn't. Oh, that's, that's a like good a trick. Yes. Okay. And a lot of times it works, uh -huh. to be honest. Uh -huh. I mean, mine is Alexa at womenempowerexpo.com. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Um, I never heard anything back until four months later. I was a senior in high school. So, okay, time out. Yes. So you are, you just did one. You didn't do follow up. No, so yeah, you, I kept on emailing. Okay, yeah, that's important to know yes, because good. because Grant says it takes about eight or nine before you'll even get on the radar of wait, wait, who was that person? Yeah, yeah, that's ringing a bell. Oh, one hundred percent persistence. Eight, like eight is the the magic number of where it starts to get their oh, attention. Okay. So go on. Good to know. Also, okay, eight, the magic number eight. Mm -hmm. Um, so then I senior year started in high school. And I got this email from the assistant saying the founder, Mary Finero, wanted to set up a conference call with me. I don't think she knew that I was a senior in high school. Oh, <laughs> because, like, were you nervous? I was so nervous. I had my little journal. Uh, I was like all prepared in my dad's office. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I just sold them on like what I was passionate about and why I wanted to help. I, I donated a percentage of proceeds to help them build schools in Africa. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's what really drew me to this mission and this brand. And a year later, I found a factory in Taiwan, printed the hang tags from Office Depot. Like, you know, it's not a big secret. It's just figuring it out yeah. and, and going this for it. This story actually sounds very familiar, uh, very similar to Sarah Blakely's story. Oh, I love Sarah Blakely. Me too. <laughs> She's on I'm my seeing list. a little yes. similar. Oh, oh, I can't. I can't. Okay, yeah. okay. 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 Um, um. <laughs> and and so then by the time I graduated high school, I had all these designs. Was selling word of mouth. Went to the University of Florida. Word of mouth marketing not the best strategy when I didn't know anyone. Mm -hmm. And taught myself how to code through the free iWeb service and just started selling those designs. And that was my first dive into entrepreneurship. And I just fell in love with the process of turning an idea into a reality. Into um, uh, um, monetizing reality. Yes. Keyword, op operative word, monetizing. I like that. Yes. Okay, so my point now is you are 17 years old and you have already done this, this massive thing, which most 17 year olds, it's safe to say, don't accomplish something like that. Were you always this driven? Yes. <laughs> okay. I mean, I was always very, very shy. Mm -hmm. um, I was going, when I went to middle school, I was too shy to even raise my hand in class. And now I'm a public speaker. Mm -hmm. And I say that because it wasn't until a mentor um, in student government in high school really 
saw something in me that I maybe didn't. And mm -hmm. also my mom always instilled confidence and always told me to believe in myself. But of mm -hmm. course, like women, girls, we have self-doubt. It's just something that we yeah, grow up with. Absolutely. And so how do we break out of that? Yeah. And I became, I, I broke out of my shell, ran for student body president, became the first student okay. body president. While you're running for student body president. Yes. Are you scared or now have you already got your big girl shoes on? Or are you scared and you're doing it anyway? Yes, courage. Okay. Courage is doing, doing it, it in anyway. spite of fear, yes. I do this all the time, almost every day right. of my life. Okay, Because so what is the alternative? To stay the same? To live in regret? Like, mm -hmm. what really is the alternative? If you lose, like, you're in the same spot. So you right. might as well go for yeah. it. And when I accomplished that, and I ran against two seniors, Ooh. Um, it was just this and you moment. Won. Yes. <laughs> it was this moment. I was like, if I can do this, what else, else can, can I, I do? do? Okay. So now yes, we're going to go to probably, I mean, the lowest rock bottom point of your life, literally when at 21 years old, you find yourself with a 1% chance of survival because you had went into septic shock? Yes. So so yeah. how do you find yourself on top of the world, literally one day, to f literally fighting for your life the next day? Yeah, so now I was 21 in college and a few months away from graduation. Um, and I ha had everything going for me. Like I was running a blog at the time. I was living with my three best friends. I was falling in love for the first time. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. And all of a sudden I had flu-like symptoms. Mm -hmm. And at 21 years old, you're like, oh, nothing can happen to me. Yeah, of course, especially septic shock. Right. I mean, how do you even get septic and shock? And the flu was going around. So all my friends were like, oh, it's just the yeah. flu, it's just the flu. Um, and luckily I really don't believe anything happens. There's no such thing as coincidence. Mm -hmm. And so I was planning this a thousand likes party on Facebook for my blog. <laughs> <laughs> this is January 26. Mm -hmm. And I invited my mom to drive up. Mm -hmm. Um, and my mom's like, no, you don't want me. It's a college party. And I'm like, no, you are a huge supporter. I want you to come up mm -hmm. a few hours before the party. I was on my bed having a hard time being able to breathe. And my mom saw my heart beating out of my neck and she looked at me and she's like, we're canceling the party. I'm taking you to the emergency room. Thank God you had your mom there. Exactly. I mean, she, I probably <sighs> would have went to sleep and the doc, you know, would have. You not, not waking up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, mm. then all of a sudden it was like, they took me in the back right away because my blood pressure was dropping rapidly. Five doctors to 25 doctors surrounding no. me. No. And I remember- And like, you remember this? Yes, okay. I remember this moment. They put a mask on my face to help me breathe. Mm -hmm. and, and are you panicking? Or are you ti too tired to panic? I was in so much physical pain and they uh -huh. couldn't give me any pain medication because my blood pressure was dropping. No. And I remember I couldn't breathe with this mask on my face and I tried pulling it off. And when I couldn't breathe with it off, I knew something mm -hmm. bad was happening. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then I was induced into a coma and the doctors told my mom, call your family. She has 24 mm -hmm. hours. Mm -hmm. So I was in a coma for six days in the ICU for a total of 10. Do you remember the coma? I'm yes. sure everybody yes. asks. You remember yeah. being More in the coma? More realistic than this reality right now. Really? Yeah. Wow. I was... So when I was in the coma, I was in a big like field of green, green grass. And this green does not exist in this world. It's so vibrant. It's like alive, the color. So you, you felt good. Yes. And okay. I was this being of light running with the wind, but I wasn't afraid. Like I was never thinking like, oh, this is the end of my life. Yeah. You were just going with it. Yeah. Free. I knew it wasn't. Uh -huh. I was more afraid when I woke up and I had a mask on my face and I couldn't move, breathe or speak. Oh, um, uh -huh. and so that was my vision in the coma. And then when I was out of the coma, because I couldn't move, breathe or speak for a very long period of time, I still had my mind. And during this time, I would picture my mind to be this like pure, healthy pink. And the rest of my body was black and rotting away because sepsis was killing all of my organs. And I would just push this pink color down to the rest you were of determined. my body. Um, you until, were like, yeah. if I don't have a physical body to move, I'm going to move my spirit through this body. Right. And, and I never it. read this. Or I, I, it was just but just, this is yeah. what you, you knew how to do. And you did it. You survived a 1% chance by doing this. So, mm -hmm. so, okay. So now <laughs> you, you come out of this. Yeah. 
now you can move, you can breathe. Mm -hmm. Everyone's like breathing a sigh of relief at this point. Mm -hmm. What do you do next? How do you like, oh, let's go back to, you know, running the world. Like how do you right. pull yourself out of that? So luckily I was still able to graduate college on time and I was determined to make my dreams come true of moving to New York City, got a job working at InStyle Magazine, everything I could have imagined. Wow. And then I got sick again. No. Um, all of the, the same things? No, but all okay. the antibiotics that were pumping in my body destroy your uh -huh. good gut flora. Wait, do we know how we got the thing in the first place? They never found out the, co the cause. Okay. But I mean, it could be anything. It could like, be, like what? Like um, I've never even heard of this before. Right. And sepsis kills one in three people. What? Yes. I've never even heard of this. Because like you could get, I had severe pneumonia that could have caused it. Um, a toothache, if, like I, not mm -hmm, me, but mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, a bug bite. Just, wow. It's basically when a bacteria gets in your bloodstream. Okay. That's what it is. Okay. Yeah. So swimming in really dirty water. Exactly. Okay. So never yeah, swimming kind of in dirty water ever again. <laughs> but I graduated and then when I was... Sick, I got diagnosed with an autoimmune disease. And that has been by far the hardest thing I've ever had to deal with because it's chronic. And I had to move back home to gain the support from my family in South Florida. Mm -hmm. um, and through this time, it was three years. I was 22 to 24 at the time. And I just felt like all of my dreams were just taken from me. And I've always been like a go-getter. Mm -hmm. And that was very difficult. And I remember I kept on asking myself why. Why did this happen to me? Mm -hmm. And when you ask yourself, why, 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 it can drive you insane. Crazy. Yes. yes. And it's not useful. That energy is wasted. Mm -hmm. And so the moment I shift the conversation and said, why did this happen for me? Wow. It changed I love everything. that viewpoint. And so is that the point where you said, I'm like, why women? Why women empower expo? Like, was that the moment when you said, I'm going to help other women specifically? No, that was the moment that I was like, I want to share my story as a public speaker. Okay. That's yes. when you get the idea to be a public speaker. Right. And okay. so I was like, I had this burning passion to just be in front of people. Mm -hmm. So I was like, Hey, how do I be a public speaker? Yes. <laughs> Tell us how you become a public speaker. And I, and I share this cause it's like tactically like tools that you can do that I implemented. Give, give us some. I literally went on meetup.com. What is meetup.com? It's just like where people that have similar interests okay. come together. And it's not a dating site, right? No. If I go there, I still, yeah, meet my husband's not going to look at me city. funny. Like okay. a lot of times when people move to a new city, they go to meetup.com. Okay. Um, so I went on meetup.com mm -hmm. and I was looking up entrepreneurship meetups, women meetups, um, health meetups, mm -hmm. anything that I thought like people could find value in my story. Okay. And so I literally emailed about 75 God, meetup you. groups. Love you. Okay. <laughs> and I you was take action. I just love it. Knows. Oh, no. <laughs> I was like, okay. I felt so discouraged. Okay. Because nobody really knew who I was. So what was I just... said about you in the very beginning without even knowing that much about you. I know that you got no's just by putting on your event. And yes. I know that you yeah, pushed you through that. that. Mm -hmm. I, I just know that about you from one thing. Anyway, go on. Thank you. <laughs> so you get 75 no's. So many no's. I felt so <laughs> discouraged for a very long time. And then I was like, even though you get the no's, if you're really passionate and you really want it, then that burning passion inside of you is still going to be lit, right? I always mm -hmm. say if there's something on your mind that's keeping you up at night, waking you up in the morning, it's there for a reason. Yes. Don't ignore Don't it. Don't ignore it. And so I couldn't ignore this. And I had this epiphany, so to say. Oh, I love epiphanies. I was like, why am I putting my dreams in, in someone else's hands? Yes. <laughs> oh, love it. Like why? My best moments have come out of that. Right. That's my awesome. best moments have come out of that where, yeah. where I've had it with the other people that I need to like elevate me. And when I take my own matters into my own hand and do it for myself, is that how women expo came about? Of course. Yes, exactly. Yes, of you course. Should, if you want something, you need to rely on yourself. Yes. And if you're a true innovator, uh, innovator, leader, um, entrepreneur, you're going to find a way to make it happen. Yeah. And so that's what I did. So I started <laughs> putting you. on, um, my own small events. My first event had five people and I was like, yes, mm. I get to inspire five people today. Wow. And Your first event, you rented yes. a room. I got a free co-working space in return for some sponsorship on whatever following I had. 
Wow. Um, I invited three of my friends who were bloggers to bring their following. Uh huh. And five people showed up. And then the next event, 20 people showed up. Yay! And the next event, 50. And this yes. was all under a blog's name, mm -hmm. Hello Perfect, that I was running at the time. Mm -hmm. And um, and then soon enough, the people in my audience saw me speak and they're like, I want you to speak at my event. And the ripple effect and the moment, you know, once yeah. you have momentum, yes. it starts. Yes. Well, that's what I was going to ask you next. So now you have momentum, but how do you get on? You've been featured on Fox, ABC, CBS, the Oprah Winfrey Network. Like, how do you get to that level? Do you wait for them to find you or now you still sending the emails with a demo reel? so to speak to them. Like, how does that happen? Yes. Because you don't have a publicist, right? I do now. Yay! Yes, You're like outsourcing. <laughs> awesome. Okay, yes. that's good yeah. to know too. So walk me through those stages. So yeah, so speaking and then I saw a need in the community uh -huh. when I was speaking now to all different events, especially locally. And I saw that women, nobody knew each other. I would speak to 100 women in PR, 50 women part of the Chamber of Commerce, and so on. And all these women were doing amazing things, and nobody knew each other. And in order for real change to occur, we need to collaborate. We need to connect. That's a big word. Right. And especially with people out of your own industry yes. if you're an entrepreneur. Absolutely. So that's where the idea for Women in Power Expo came about. And the first event had about 2,000 people. I did it all through organic social media because I didn't have a big budget and public speaking mm -hmm. and pitching myself to the media um, using whatever resources so I had. So you pitched yourself. And, and, and again, how do you get through the, the gatekeepers? You just keep following up with your emails or eventually we get Wendy in the picture. How do you even yes. find Wendy? And when do you know when to outsource? Like when, when do you know... When did you figure out what was the time? Okay, I need somebody to help me now. Yeah, that's a really good question. So definitely emailing and cold calling. Mm -hmm. um, you just have to and you have to follow up. I know that if I could get someone on the phone, I could sell them on what I'm doing. You're amazing. <laughs> because I'm passionate. People can hear it. Yes. I mean, that's the difference. I always uh -huh. say like energy and confidence are the two keys to success. How do you get confidence? That's a good question. I speak a lot about confidence. I think that's the number one thing that holds people back. Absolutely. Absolutely. So confidence. Because they feel like they get on the phone. I've done it before where, especially in a sales, like, right. like you can't, you cannot put me on a phone at, for me to try to sell something because I will give it to you by the end of the phone call. <laughs> you know, like nobody trusts me here. <laughs> you yeah, know, they're like, uh-uh, so don't, don't give that job to right. me. So how do you, how do you get that confidence to, to sell yourself? Yes. Yeah, so the, one thing that I really like to share because it provides real advice that people can implement is something I like to call the confidence spectrum. So on this side, you're really confident. On that side, you're not. Exactly. Most people lie over here. Uh -huh. And so how do you get over here? Right. In situations where you normally don't feel confident. Mm -hmm. And so what I like to do is think about the last time you felt so confident. Mm -hmm. Maybe you were with your friends. Maybe mm -hmm. you were hiking. Maybe you were... Um, I don't know, in your zone, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And then pick apart that environmental setting and see what made you feel confident. Did you just get a new haircut? Was it what you were wearing? Did you just achieve something? That. Are you looking forward to uh -huh. something? And then see how you can apply those things into the areas that you don't feel confident. Like for example, networking. Mm -hmm. I never felt confident networking. And the times where I got more business connections, I was like, what? What, what was the difference? What was the winning action is what I'm hearing you say. Right. For lack of a better word, what was the winning thing that you felt made you have a little extra advantage or when you were and repeat those? Exactly. I love it. Yeah. And for me, it was just having a friend or my assistant or mm -hmm. my mom come mm -hmm. to me with the event mm -hmm. and I felt more confident. Um, someone said yesterday at a speaking gig when I was talking about this, she said, I don't care how casual the event is. I'm going to wear heels because it makes me feel more confident. I, I and agree. That's what you have to do. I have to wear the heels, yeah, so you know, at events. I, I do. Like if I'm in right. I'm like, no. Okay. So for women um, that want to go after their dreams, um, what would be the first step where if they wanted to be a public speaker or whatever it is, jewelry line, you know, any number of things, mm -hmm. and they want to put themselves in the marketplace, what would you say would be the first step that they could do? like today to just start that. Right. So because now they don't really know about the the winning thing of what they did because they like like let's pretend like they've never done anything like this before. Just like how you had to jump in from knowing nothing. Mm -hmm. 
What would so be the-, the first thing I would say is to really own in on what you want. Yes. And then what, like really what you can implement today. And what is, what, what is, okay, back, yeah. I'm, I'm taking okay. this baby steps, yes. but what is it when you say, what is it that you want? Because some people just want to have nice clothes. Is that going to get them or do they have well, to have- why do they want to have nice clothes? Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, like right. th- they have to distinguish, is there a real purpose? Like what is the exchange they want to give to somebody? Like how do you- Exactly. Like- if you, j- if you think about that and you ask yourself why, why, why to get to that root and you find yourself not excited about really what that why mm-hmm, is mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and it's just an end result that you want, you're you're not going to be successful. You're not going to have the persistence. No, yeah. I mean, it's a journey. If you think about it, like even in today's age, we're all striving for more followers, more views. Once you hit that 10K, you want 20K. Once you hit the 20K, you want 50K. I want a million. Right. I want to be Grant now. <laughs> um, it's exactly <laughs> like, so if you're striving for that end result, you're going to always be on this ongoing rat race. And mm-hmm. it's not a way that creates that freedom lifestyle yeah. and that fulfillment. Right. So today, so really what you could do is figure out what, what you, you really want. want and why you really want mm-hmm. it. Then take a piece of paper, or whiteboard, put it at the top and then create a strategy backwards. Like before you create a clothing company, Love this. right? Like clothing line, what do you okay. need? You need the actual clothes. Before you can have the actual clothes, you need a factor, a uh, manufacturer. Before you find a manufacturer, you need designs. Before you have designs, you need to know who you're targeting. So like literally I just did that so quickly. How did you know how to do that? Because I always, I'm a big like journal buff. Uh-huh. And so when I have like tons of journals of all different like business ideas and plans. And when I ever went to implement something when I was younger, you start with number one and then you're when like, she was five, <laughs> when she was younger, but then I'm like, what is number one? You don't even <laughs> know where to start. Like, do I do a logo? Do I do a website? So doing the backwards strategy mm-hmm. is just like the skeleton. And then you could rewrite it and then bullet point the actionable things like get a domain name, get the Instagram, like in between those, mm-hmm. those mm-hmm. things. So I kind of, it just worked for me and I've been sharing it since. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. And then prioritizing like, what what do you really need to spend money on? And then versus, you know, like I feel like some people spend so much time in the planning that they don't get into the action, which I know is mm-hmm. not a problem you've ever had, but it is a problem I've had sometimes where I get too too much into the planning and not into the doing. Where and, yes. and, and, and I think that's so awesome that you said do this strategy backwards is because you can see the whole layout and then you can see what, what are the first steps and then go sell that product or whatever that is. And then when you make a little money, dump it into more. Now I can do this mm-hmm. or I can do that. You know what I'm saying? And keep right. dumping the money back into the business until the business is really booming. Exactly. Like everyone says when you delegate, you know, you have more time to make more money, mm-hmm. but it's really hard to do that. And I think we're talking to a lot of solo entrepreneurs. I was a solo entrepreneur for a very long time mm-hmm. and I still work with a very small team and it's, it's literally just knowing, um, it's having belief in yourself Mm -hmm. and it's not looking so much at what everyone else is doing because they have different resources. They have different lifestyle. They have different ideas. And so it's coming back to like really keeping it simple in the beginning. What is getting you to where you need to be and what's all the fluff that you don't really need. It's great. Yeah. But you can have that once you can hire a virtual assistant, you know? So that's kind of, it has been a struggle for me to learn that, but it's been game changer. And what, when was the one point where you realized, okay, now I need to outsource? Like, what was the point where you said, I can't do this all on my own? Because so many people stay at that place where they try to do it all on their own and they never grow and they don't know what's wrong and why they're not expanding. So at what point do you realize, or did you realize, I need to now hire out other people in order to grow? Yeah, and that was really hard for me because I... We want to do everything ourselves. I know how to do graphic design. I know how to code a website. I know how to sell. Like, And so it's like, why am I going to spend money on that when it takes more time to train? Right. But at the same time, someone said this to me, and that's kind of when the light bulb went off. Mm -hmm. Alexa, you can't be a conductor and play all the instruments. Wow. And I yeah. was like, oh man, you're so right. That was, 
Can't, yeah, yeah, that was mic drop right there. Um, and that's when I started delegating out more. And it's still like, I'm now looking to delegate more and you could do it easily like freelancers. I pay someone 350 a month to edit videos. I still edit some videos, but you need more now, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And so it's doing it baby steps. So you're smart about obviously your cash flow, mm-hmm. but I knew it was time when I had thousands of people tell me, how much of an impact I'm making in their life. And And these are through uh, DMs? DMs, in person at speaking engagements, through emails. And I knew what I was doing was purposeful and meaningful. And you need to be able to refuel your own energy Mm -hmm. in order to continue to give out that energy. And so how do you refuel? One, an exchange of money is refueling to support, Mm -hmm. right? So that is what really helped me figure out what's important and where do I want to go? I absolutely love it. Well, I really appreciate and loved hanging out and talking to you today. Thank you so much for coming into the studio. This is Alexa Carlin. Uh, a force to be reckoned with. I am so impressed by you. I cannot <laughs> wait to speak at your event, Women Ex- uh, Women in Power Expo in February. How November. About- oh, November 10th, sorry. I'm thinking about yes, GrowthCon. So it's on my mind. Um, <laughs> no. I know you're not sleeping at night either. Yes. Me either, and it's in February. <laughs> yeah. So um, where can they find out the details if they wanted to purchase tickets or be there, or yes. how does it work? So you could just visit WexFTL, so W-E-X-F-T-L.com. That's the landing page for Fort Lauderdale. Also, Women Empower X on social and Alexa Rose Carlin on social. Everything's out there for you guys to purchase, be involved. It literally is an amazing event of positive energy, but it's more than women supporting women. It's finding the tools and knowledge to take your business and life to the next level while finding the community of support. Yeah, and that's why I'm so glad you're here today. And um, I really look forward to the event for that specific reason. Thank you so much for watching Women in Power. We love you and I'll see you next week.